everybody. This is Brian Mosalem. We are back with Beyond the Highlights today, filling in solo for my two co-hosts, Vern Crump and Jason Strayhorn. I'm all, all by myself. Um, today we have a very special guest with us, um, Ali Sayed, founder and president of Hype Athletics, as well as the co-chairman of the Dearborn Education Foundation. He's here to talk a little bit about his organization and some of the great, wonderful things they're doing for the community. Ali, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for having me, Ms. Masala. Pleasure, just a pleasure. So tell us a little bit about your organization and your mission and, and some of the different uh, programs that you provide for, for your membership. Great. Well, thank you, first of all, again, uh, for the opportunity. Um, you know, Hype, Hype is a wonderful organization that was founded back in 2001. And then we had a mission to provide drug-free, violent-free, and diverse athletic environments for really for adults. And uh, it was done so uh, to f really to, to fill a gap and a void for adult programming in the city of Dearborn, Dearborn Heights. Um, we created a three-on-three -three basketball tournament with that mission to promote unity, advocate for unity, tolerance, acceptance between all the different races and religions in this in this really this demographical area. I remember that. What year was that? Uh, 2001. I remember. Yeah, that. it was at uh, actually it was at Hemlock, Hemlock Park. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, um, really, the the mission was analyzed and assessed, and and in order for us to really accomplish that goal, is immediately. Um, you know, brought to the attention that if, if, if successful, it would have to be done working with younger kids. So we approached Dearborn Schools and Livonia Public Schools, and we created after-school initiatives uh, where these involved basketball clinics, training clinics, with a life skills component added on to each of those training sessions. And they went on, and those programs are actually still in place, but we've expanded those after-school programs to um, probably 12 different cities, 18 different locations within those cities. So we use municipalities or school districts, the actual schools, to host those after-school camps. So tell us a little bit, what are some of the after-school programs? Because I think, you know, you've seen that the behavior of the child change as opposed to when I grew up, you grew up. Yeah, you know, absolutely. These, you know, these type of programs are very important for a community. Tell us a little bit about some of those programs. Well, I, I can, uh, you know, just to kind of jump on what you stated that, you know, when we were kids, the streets were safer. Mm -hmm. You know, the environment in our neighborhood was safer. Uh, parents were a little bit more relaxed with us being out walking, you know, when the sun rises, walk out to the park, play some basketball or football or whatever we did, and come back home when the sun <coughs> sets, you know. Uh, they were a little bit more relaxed. Today it's a different day and age, you know, and um, it's the reality. The, the reality is that there's a lack of safe zone or safe environments for kids to, to be in after hours, after school hours. I mean, they're in one classroom for six, seven, eight hours out of the day. Um, and, you know, obviously there's a, there's a need to create that safe zone environment for, for children and for families, really. Okay, so some of the programs that you have after school uh, are? Those programs are, I mean, we have now educational programs, so tutoring, reading recovery, math programming, uh, computer training programs for adults and for kids. Wow. Uh, we also offer um, a really cool teach and feed program that we're launching this year. I'll give you some more insight on that when we talk about the center. Um, but uh, we obviously have all the sports components. So basketball, soccer, football, baseball, girls, volleyball, things like that. You know, So we have all those athletic components because that's the Nutrition, honey. health and wellness. Health and wellness programs with our dietitian and nutritionist. Yeah. Wonderful. So, so the honey is the sports. That's what sure. attracts the kids. Sure. Once we have the kids, then we can start implementing drug prevention programs. We can, we can talk about different life skills topics, such as the effects of advertising that TV has on kids. They don't realize what music and radio and TV has on, on them because it's subliminal. The messages are, are hidden, hmm. uh, nor do the parents, really. You know, so we can talk about the effects of tobacco. Tobacco. We can talk about the effects of, you know, really, um, you know, just making, you know, decisions in life that, you know, uh, cognitively, mentally, they, they may not know is right at that time. Wow, that's wonderful. So, so your center's in Dearborn Heights. Yep. It's been open for Since how long? Since May of 2012. We're about to celebrate our third anniversary. Right? Wonderful. Yeah. Um, and how many? What percentage of your membership would you say are Dearborn and Dearborn Heights residents? Uh, combined, we're, we're upwards of about 70%, maybe more. That's wonderful. Yeah, 70, 75% of our membership base. Well, we have about 5,200 members as of today. 5,200 members, wow. Yep. And, um, you know, of that, probably 70 to 75%. I know half are Dearborn Heights, for sure. You know, because I, I, I talk to folks all the time that go there, that send their kids there, that think the world of your programs and all the different after-school activities. And, you know, I think... Um, what you guys are doing for the community is really, really setting up the next generation. You know, we didn't have this stuff. 
And yeah. I think it's important that everybody embraces centers like this. You know, um, <coughs> Brian, you know, it's funny. I went and spoke at, a, at an event uh, that, that had a substance abuse prevention model that was the, the really to educate the parents on prevention um, and educate them on, on what the habits are forming, how they're forming for kids today. What are, they, what are kids really getting involved in and how are they getting involved and where is it coming from? And, you know, unfortunately, society is so busy, our, you know, for us as parents and for many of the parents out there today, they're so busy that they don't understand the difference between prevention and intervention. And, you know, someone gets addicted to drugs and we immediately act when they're addicted. But what, it's could, reactionary, we have, yeah. what could we have done prior to that? You know, and, and the center that we built back in 2012 um, in partnership with the county, Wayne County, in partnership with... Uh, the federal government in the state of Michigan, uh, the, the model was to strengthen the infrastructure of the entire family by providing programs and services that meet the needs of mom, dad, and children all at the same time. So mom and dad can participate in their own activities, whether it be a you know, fitness program like Zumba or boot camp or yoga, while the son or daughter can participate in a similar fitness program. It could be basketball, it can be yoga, kids yoga, kids Zumba, or even take part in a homework assistance program. So the, the model is really developed and it's, it's, you know, everything we do, we want to try to establish something that can be duplicated or replicated by other organizations. I mean, if this is going to be the cure for a, a community, then by all means, let's try to replicate that as far as we can. And Hype has consulted, I, you know, I've personally seen over 120 organizations from around the world, uh, delegations from Brazil and Malaysia and India, they've all come to the center, they've taken their tours, they've analyzed and assessed what we've done, and I send them off with you know, a seven-step plan to to a success to structure in a successful organization for their communities. Um, so thankfully, we've been able to establish that model. Um, but it's it's comprehensive. You know, we have to have the attraction, the athletics, and the fitness sure. components, and then Honey. we have to we have to be able to integrate community service initiatives as well as education-based in initiatives. So, how do we promote and advocate for education, civic civic and political engagement? Um, you know, even religious and spiritual awareness. We don't have to promote a religion, but we really should make the idea of it. You know, well, well, not not only that, but you know, we, we need these kids and these adults to realize that it's okay that you practice one faith and I practice another. Sure, that's okay. Um, and we need to be able to really capitalize on that. I mean, if it's, if we're talking business, you know, you graduated with a law degree, and I'm a, I'm a law degree graduate as well. You know, but you're from India and I'm from China. I mean, there could be possibilities where we can work together in the corporate world if we're talking international business and whatnot. But, you know, that's just one example. I mean, you know, building tolerance and acceptance amongst the different races and ethnicities is what hype is about. You know, we have to break those barriers. And the best way to break it is through sports. Because if you're on my team, we both want the same no thing. Question. And what is that? <clears throat> to to win. win. To win. Simple. So once we have that mentality together, now we're friends, now we're brothers, now you're getting married and I'm at your wedding. And that's, that's my story personally. You know, in, in fifth grade, I went to Oakman Elementary School, K to five, Oakman Elementary School in Dearborn. You know, it was the heart of East Dearborn, predominantly Arab community. I lived one block away from Detroit. Those were my friends, Arabs and, and the, the African-Americans that lived in Detroit. That's who I played basketball with. That's who I played baseball with. But then in sixth grade, they took me to Duval in the west end of Dearborn. It was like another world mm -hmm. for them and for me, right? I didn't know that type of society even existed. Those sure. kids were those kids w weren't allowed to play at the park at night, you know. Um, but it was like the West Side Story at recess, and you know, in sixth grade was a very challenging time for me in my life personally, and for a lot of my friends that I that, that are now my brothers, you know, uh, where you know recess and lunchtime we're 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 fighting it, you know, we're, we're arguing with each other, we're we're you know we don't like each other, you know. And then in seventh grade, they bust me to Bryant Middle School along with all my neighborhood. And now we're on the same football team and we're on the same basketball team. And, we're, you know, in football, we went undefeated, unscored upon for two years. You know, those are the memories that are going to last with us forever. I remember that busing when that first came out. And I'm, to this day, I will, I will claim that that was the best thing that ever happened to the city of Dearborn, to it, it, integrate it, the kids, let absolutely. them all learn about each other. Absolutely. The world absolutely. doesn't look like East Dearborn. You know, the world looks doesn't yeah, look exactly yeah. like West Dearborn yeah. so and know, I, I can confidently say that you know the, the class of kids that you know I graduated with from from Bryant and Dearborn High and 
you know, are, are these guys are my brothers and my sisters, like whether wherever they came from. You Great. Know, that, so tell that's, me, that's the experience that I want. To, I want every other kid to sure. share. Sure. So you you have 5,200 members. You have thousands of kids coming through there. Yeah. 70 percent Dearborn, Dearborn Heights kids. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the problems that you're seeing, or some of the challenges that you're seeing uh, for the community, and and some of the ways we're working to help fix it, prevent it, teach it, educate it. Yeah, I, I think, um, well, I know uh, that, that one of the major, major issues is um, we're cultivating a society where religion is frowned upon, number one. It's people are fair to admit what they believe, um, whether it be Catholic or Muslim or Jewish, right? Because they all have their, their flaws, right? And, and media specifically. Um, you know, I also believe strongly that we're, we're cultivating a society that um, where where the abnormal is now normal. Prior years, you know, you know, the music that was being released on, you know, and, and, and the me the messages that were you know delivered through the music before were very innocent. Tell us what you're seeing in the kids, though, aside from what you believe. Well, I can tell you that, and, and it's it's as true as it's going to get that there's serious problems with kids. Um, you know, promoting and, and really trying to higher achieve in education, seek that higher level of education. I can tell you that we have a very serious drug prevention, drug drug problem in our community, substance abuse problem, uh, both from the pharmaceutical end as well as the illicit street drugs and alcohol and wow. tobacco. Um, substance abuse also one 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 area that it uh, covers is also um, underage sex mm -hmm. and underage STDs. You know, amongst minors and the practice between uh, the, the kids, um, we have a very, very serious problem with that, and it's it's going to be a sad problem that if we don't act upon immediately, it's going to it's going to really damage every single community in this country. Um, we we have to take a preventative approach. We have to take a diversionary approach. So preventative, we want to educate the kids at a young age that these are wrong whatever it is these actions are wrong the this participating in such activities is wrong if we see that a child has experimented in smoking a cigarette for example or has you know drank alcohol at a young age then we want to divert that person before we have to intervent right so if we or if we're intervening in, in this child's you know behaviors we may be too late you know some addic addictive uh, behaviors may have already been cultivated mm. So diversionary, what do we mean? Putting that child in an environment that's positive where the, where the children or, or young adults that are participating in this event are actually drug-free, violent-free, right? And that promote a positive environment. Um, I'm, I'm more worried about drug use and underage sex than anything else, mm. personally. And I sure. see it more today than ever before. Okay. You know? We're involved with the with the ju juvenile court system of Wayne County. We see and we're always referred children under the age of 18 from the third district court, 19th and 20th district court. And you know, in, in communicating with these kids, uh, Brian, I'm, I'm it's it's sad, it's sad to hear that an 18 year old got caught drinking and driving or a minor in possession with marijuana or alcohol or you know they are smoking tobacco, they are engaging in sex activities, sexual activities. Um, and we don't know, I mean, I have children that are young, you have children that are young, and there's a lot of young kids out there, and it's scary what society's gonna, how society's gonna unfold for their, for their future. If it's, we're talking a 20 year difference between us and these younger kids. I mean, for you, 30, for me, 50. Yeah, <laughs> close. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, it's, 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 it's scary. It's but you're scary. doing your part. You're doing your we're, part to we're, help. We're trying. We trying need, to do our we part. We need more religious institutions to do their part. We need more, you know, recreation, um, budgets are limited in a lot of municipalities. It's it's secondary to security, and it's understandable. Understandable. Public safety, no question. Public safety should be taken care of. We want a safe, secure neighborhood for our children. Recreation models need to be created that are affordable, where there's community activism and volunteerism being promoted amongst different communities. Let the people come out to the recreation centers. Let the people help run and execute programs for their children and engage and get involved. You know, parental involvement is a, has been a problem from, you know, day one. I mean, you know, our, our, our fathers worked in factories and, 
you know, my dad probably came to, you know, a handful of my soccer games or basketball games. But when he came, I was the happiest guy on the court, sure. you know. Uh, but it's understandable <coughs> today as an adult that, you know, I, I understand my dad was busy, you know, and it's just the way it was, you know. But today we have a better opportunity to, to, to raise our children and get more involved in PTAs and to get involved in their sport, sporting uh programs and whatnot and and to see that see your kids seek the highest level of education teach them how to cha challenge themselves I mean it could be something as small as you know um, making a habit to have dinner with your kids on a, on a nightly basis sure you know, every night you have to have dinner with your kids and it's a tradition oh God I wish you know that's something I mean we're just everybody's it's so a busy, busy society it's mm -hmm. a busy society mm -hmm. but it's it's determining our wants and our needs and our goals sure. right and so uh, balancing those you know balance balance my wife always that. tells me have a balance. You need a balance, a better balance. Yeah, and right. it's, it's the same for me as well. I mean, I have 5,000 kids. I mean, we have over 100,000 people that walk through our doors for basketball tournaments and volleyball Tell tournaments. Tell us some about those tournaments year-round. So what, what kind of tournaments do you guys run? What kind of participation do you guys get? Yeah, what so are some of the time frames or dates or phone numbers possibly they could call to sign up for some of that stuff? Yeah, we have, we have a lot of awesome programs such as Camp Hype, which is a full-day summer program, 11 weeks long. Where a child can be, you know, can participate literally from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Wow! You know, mom and dad goes to work. Summertime, I'm they're, assuming. Yeah, summertime. They're in a, they're in a, they're involved in a program that encourages education, physical activity, recreation, sports programming, and we challenge them with different activities, different topics on a weekly basis. So we, you know, the weekly topics are the form of education. So when it's all about animals, for example, we have partnerships with different animal shelters that bring in kit, you know, kittens or dogs and you know, different different animals that, you know, just to educate our kids, you know, and take that preventative approach. One time is about the environment one week, you know, where we talk about that we have an opportunity to teach them about the habits that society has today and ways that they can prevent, um, you know, the, the, the negative effects of, of waste and disposal. Uh, and what green. That those, yeah, just going green, basically. That is the title of the week, going green. Um, you know, we have tons of AAU and travel basketball programs and tournaments. We have our own Team Hype AAU, which is an, a state contender and a national contender yeah, now. We have you close guys, to 20 teams, yeah. I hear you guys have a lot. You've had Division One signing period where you've had a lot of former yeah, students or athletes yeah, come out of Hype that have signed to move on to college yeah, careers, yeah, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Um, a lot in <coughs> basketball and football specifically. We, we started our own very own statewide 7-on-7 seven -seven football program. Seven on seven is like a Pascal mm -hmm. passing game. No, no um, pads or you know helmets. More um, an offensive game. You know, you, so you have your DBs and, and safeties, and you also have your wide receivers and a running back and a quarterback, basically. Um, and we have team hype out of uh, Grand Rapids, Flint, Brighton, uh, Saginaw, wow. Toronto, or well Windsor, Toronto area. There's Canadian team, and then Detroit. So we have seven of our own teams that represent hype. There are our, our teams, our players. And we play in a league that's statewide. So our kids here in Detroit, Dearborn, Detroit area, can actually play against Grand Rapids kids in the off season. You know, and we're duplicating that model for basketball as well as we speak. What league would they join? We it's our own league. It's your own league that they play just only. Oh, they only play the hype yeah. teams. Yeah, they don't, but, they don't but play they're playing outside. team hype from Grand Rapids, Got team it. hype from Saginaw. Got it. And it's an awesome experience. Very, very popular. We have close to 300 participants in this statewide program. Man, that's got to be a massive amount of work. How do you coordinate something like that statewide? Fortunately, I mean, we have we have a very strong uh, staff, administrative staff that helps administer the logistics of such a program. It's a it's a pretty complex program. Um, but it's it's really pushing the philosophy, partner or perish. The only way we're all going to succeed in life, the only way us as organizations, municipalities, um, and even corporations are going to succeed is to find that synergy between another organization or even an individual that has like-minded goals and objectives or shares a mission that you may have. So for us, it's, it's going to Grand Rapids and r recruiting a coach that understands what we want to do and how we want to do it and bringing them on staff and making them the director of Grand Rapids and the mm -hmm. same goes for Flint and Saginaw and Brighton and and uh, Team Detroit we run ourselves but that's great stuff yeah. I mean the, the impact you can have on today's youth and next generation yeah I don't think it's measurable so I'm um, just like any nonprofit you need funds to be sustainable yeah um, I know once a year you guys have your annual dinner mm -hmm. I know that's around the corner yep can April you, 16th can you tell us a little bit about that? Yep, absolutely. So we, 
um, annually we have we have multiple campaigns but this is this is the the, the top one um, we celebrate our anniversary which this year would be our 14th anniversary as an organization and our third of the hype recreation center on Warren Avenue um, so it's very unique uh, it's a unique time for us and basically we we invite our dignitaries our community leaders and and the theme is the village that raised the child. So we all know it takes a village to raise a child, that, that so saying. True. So we want to highlight the village. We want to highlight the community members, the partners, the organizations, the individuals, the corporations, the, the community members that are elected. Um, we want to highlight their achievements, their, you know, what, what, what impact they have as individuals or organizations on society, on kids. Um, and it's a really unique event. It allows us to, so we, we highlight, um, you know the village the village award basically uh, to four uh, recipients annually. This year's recipients are uh, Les Stanford Chevrolet, uh, Meyer Corporation, mm -hmm. uh, Meyer Food Stores. Um, we also have a UAW Ford with sure. uh, with Jimmy Settles, mm -hmm. who has contributed into our um, Feed Detroit Teach and Feed uh, program, which I'll, I'll He's explain. He's a great guy. Yeah, I'll explain after. Um, and our, our fourth uh, partner that we're going to be recognizing uh, this year, is the tip of my tongue, that, that's unfortunate. Tell us a little bit about the Feed Detroit yeah. program. Um, so the Feed Detroit program is a very unique program, and it's our campaign. It's another annual fundraising campaign that we have. And um, over Thanksgiving, we feed about 1,000 families uh, just right before Thanksgiving. We provide them with whole turkeys and the, the complete package, it's the wonderful. stuffing, the mashed potatoes, and the canned vegetables and breads. And uh, we have Greenland as the fourth Greenland Fruit Market, gotcha. who is an annual contributor to our Feed Detroit campaign. Um, we feed, it's Metro Detroit, but we took the Metro out, but we feed a thousand families from Dearborn Heights, Dearborn, Detroit, Garden City, Redford, like our, our pocket within wonderful. a five mile radius of, of the center. And um, UAW also contributes to that campaign. Um, and right before Christmas, we also have another feeding program and a Toys for Tots program. So we go to a few homeless shelters, one specifically uh, with the Detroit Rescue Mission, uh, where they house women, marginalized women, mm -hmm. and their children only. So we're able to collect toys and gifts, and we head out there, and we provide their kids with gifts, and even the parents or the moms with gifts. And it's a really, really... Um, it's a rewarding uh, program that that's we have. That's wonderful. Yeah, so that's part of that. And we also built a 1,000 square foot greenhouse with an aquaponic system. Um, and we also have 36 outdoor gardening plots. So what we try to, what we're gonna do this year is, is we've created the Teach and Feed program and it's, it is what it sounds like. Uh, we wanna have a classroom of 36 students um, that's gonna be free for participation. And enrollment is actually started now on our website. Um, but those 36 plots, we want them to not only know and learn how to how to basically grow vegetables agriculture the basics of agriculture and planting uh, but we want to create this farmers market so we can provide fresh produce to these needy families um, the percentage is scary over 83 percent of low-income families are malnourished wow yeah um, and uh, it's something that you know it's 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 to my heart, you know. I, we, you know, and for the whole organization, I got to say, all the staff feel the same way about it, and it's, uh, it's something. I that mean, it's got to be. You're, you're not doing this for money, you yeah. Know, quite no. frankly, no. there's a bigger mission here. Yeah, of course. You know? Of course. This is something I remember uh, you 15 years ago talking about. Yeah. You know, building building organizations like this. You, it seems like you've done a wonderful job. Thank you. You know, Thank so you. April 16th is your annual dinner, mm -hmm. um, and if people would like to purchase tickets. Yeah, tickets are $50. <coughs> for, uh, it's a donation, and uh, they can go to our website at hypeathletics.org to purchase the tickets, um, or they can call our center at 313-436-0043. Uh, That's wonderful. Yep. So what's, the, what's your favorite program that you run right now? Oh. Do you have a favorite? Yeah, and there, there's, so, there's so many. Uh, there's so many, but I'll tell you one. Um, we partnered with Durban Public Schools. They have a transitional program for kids that have special needs, and their home is actually at the center. Um, really? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's the most rewarding. They've been there for three years. So basically what they do with these kids that have you know, severe um, disabilities, mental disabilities, and or physical, uh, they train them and teach them 
into becoming a part Life of the skills. workforce. Yeah, no, really? a workforce. So they workforce. partnered with different entities. Hype was a, was one of their original partners, along with, you know, the Double Tree Hotel sure. or the Dearborn Inn or some facilities like that, where they take these kids and they teach them how to make beds and they teach them how to work. And uh, we we actually we actually hired our first uh, employee wow. from this group. So that's wonderful. Um, we we were able to convince them to move their home into our center, so they're there every day. And these kids are angels on earth. So so hold on, they move their homes into your center. Explain they, so so they were their actual classroom is okay. at our center now. Wow. So they, they you know the bus picks up the kids, drops them off at our center every morning. So they're part of Dearborn Public Schools. Yep. And their actual classroom. Inside of that classroom is a Dearborn Schools employee, a teacher yeah. from Dearborn Schools. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's um, a really, really cool program. They Dearborn Schools, um, you know, they, they, they are they're leaders. In, in you know these types of programs in the state you know and led by uh, superintendent Wisman and his whole administrative staff um, you know they're, they're doing a phenomenal job with that district very proud of them sure so while they're in your center what 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 does your center provide to them to help them advance their education? What do they do inside of your center? Well, they have well, we like, why are they in your center and why can't what are they doing there that they can't do at Dearborn schools good question um, well, our center has fitness rooms where the kids are actually also participating. They they walk, they exercise in our fitness room. We have the, one of the largest indoor tracks in this region. Um, we have access to a computer lab where these kids can actually get some basics of computer training. We have a library, which unfortunately is not able to be used by them. Not too many of them know have that functionality sure. to know how to read. Um, but it's it's multi-use they come in it's their classroom but they also are taught basic janitorial services at hype so so sure. the, we, we we work with them and they their staff of course do a great job at it but that's the basics of their transitional workforce development is um you know janitorial it's motor skills How developing motor skills 16 to like 21 or 22 wow yeah it's a great program i go to cedar point with them every year um honestly angels on earth that is just yeah. wonderful yeah that's my favorite program by That's far. your favorite one by far. I don't huh? care about basketball. I don't care about football. Those those kids are my heart for sure. So I was talking to um, Curtis Blackwell, yep. Michigan State's mm -hmm. uh, direct head of recruiting mm -hmm. of the football program, mm -hmm. and I saw a bunch of kids on the sideline, and I asked him, "How did those kids get over here?" And he said uh, that he talked to his relationships, his trainers at Hype, yep. and they recommended these kids. So now um, Michigan State University is looking at these kids based on your organization's recommendation. Absolutely. I think that's wonderful. Yeah, we developed the whole sports performance. I can talk to you for days uh, on what Hype does, uh, but we developed a sports performance division, and we train close to 1,200 pro, semi-pro, college, elite high school athletes, and obviously all the kids that participate in our programs, football and basketball, the high school kids. Close also. to 1,200? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Pro, um, we've we've had, and, and forgive me, I don't remember all their names, but um, we've had the figure skating couple for the U.S. national team uh, train at high. Got me. Had, you know, Will Goldstein. Sure, uh, Will Goldstein played at Michigan State. Played at Tampa Michigan Bay State, Buccaneers yeah. Right now. We, um, you know, the current, the current we, we you have. You had um, the defensive tackle, Malik McDowell. Malik McDowell was one, one of our players. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Played with he's us, five trained star with us. Recruit. Yeah, he's, sure. he's a. Great kid. Um, Great kid. And there's also a few others as well that I know for sure have gone there, been recruited uh, to Michigan State, not through Hype specifically, I'm sure through the high schools, but we've, you know, we've had the opportunity to, to train them and teach them. And but you do, but but really if you think about it, for the head of a, you know, a top five football program in the country who's in charge of recruiting to have mm -hmm. kids on the sideline. That played for Hype. Based on your recommendation, says a lot about the credibility your organization is building statewide. Yeah, I think that's wonderful. Thank you. God, that's great, all the great things that yeah. you're doing. It's the philosophy. Our philosophy is pretty unique with regards to, um, you know, what we try to, how we try to train train these individuals. And we try to model the, the you know, the, 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 the methods that Michigan State and other top universities model. That is wonderful. Model. Yeah. Well, so focusing on balance, speed mechanics, running mechanics, sure. all that stuff, yeah. Well, Ali, thank you for joining us today. Yeah, my pleasure. It's been it's a great honor. to learn about your organization. I'm sitting here with Ali Sayed, president and founder of uh, Hype Athletics, Hype Organization, Hype Athletics. Hype Athletics Community yeah. in the Hype Recreation Center. In the Hype Recreation Center. Yeah. Great to have him, Dearborn Heights resident, also co-chairman of the Dearborn Schools Education Foundation. Thank you for joining us. I'm Brian Mosalem. You are watching Beyond the Highlights.